G'day, WFX Malice here, back with my third official YouTube video. Now look, I don't know how long I'm gonna carry on with this counting my videos in. Uh, I'm sure that's gonna fade away very quickly. But before we get started, yes, my shirt is really messing with this camera. It doesn't know what to do. I've tried manually adjusting it. The more I adjust it, uh, the more it's washing colors out in the background. As you can see, my cupboard there looks uh, almost pure white, where it's actually a speckled brown. The more I adjust it though, uh, my face is looking washed out. Chrome trimmings are standing out more than ever. Anyway, I'm not going to flex, let's just move on. Uh, this is a direct follow-up from my video I made the other day with this uh, hinged bracket, hinged style bracket I should say. Um, the intent was to uh, mount my uh, PC to my sim rig, uh, which all sort of started with this fixed bracket. Um, while I was designing it, I came up with a bit of an idea for a swivel bracket, um, something that perhaps mount a uh, home theatre speaker or a uh, CCTV camera. So uh, I made a couple of uh, ideas, put, put pen to paper, um, come up with something that I think is going to work and I've estimated we're going to get somewhere between 90 and 120 degrees swivel. Uh, the idea though is, look, anyone can design a swivel bracket but it's the simplicity it's making things nice and easy so it's I guess easier to modify and change the size of in the future um, I've downloaded many things off Thingiverse and people just over complicate things um, there's this camera mount that uh, I downloaded to try and um, make my own camera mount I wanted just to use the part that connected to the uh, to the C270 camera um, I thought why reinvent the wheel someone's already got a uh, design on there and there's nearly 50 parts to this diagram uh, there's way too much there they could have simplified this I think I actually started remaking it for him and I think I used about 15 or 20 parts to that uh, same sketch uh, or uh, 3d model rather um, and it's just an example of what not to do I'm not trying to pick on this designer um, it is a beautiful looking bracket they've got some really good shapes and angles in there but just keep things simple and you'll see that in my designs I'll go back and I'll delete things if I don't need it and I'll re-modify that initial first sketch but anyway let's jump over to Fusion 360 and uh, see what we can do okay so we're going to open up our fixed wall bracket that we created last time and we're just going to go down and edit that first sketch first thing we're going to do is create two construction lines we're going to go midpoint there to the outside midpoint there to the outside now we're going to create some solid lines and we're going to hover over that midpoint we created and scroll up to move up to the top and as you can see it's now drawn a uh, a guideline there to make sure that we're getting that edge of the circle we're just going to click on the top we're going to do the same thing over here And then we're going to create some lines from the uh, edges of these circles over to this new line we just created. Same on the bottom. And naturally we're going to do the same on the other side here. All right, now we could finish it there. This part here is optional, not really required. Now we're going to do this at 45 degrees. So I'm going to press tab and I'm going to enter 45 degrees in manually just so that it makes sure that we can't go any other angle. I'm just going to bring that up to the edge there. We'll do the same here on the top. And as you can see, Fusion has already said, yep, 45 degrees because I know what you're trying to do here. Quite clever like that. Now we're going to do this side here. Uh, you can see there it did select 135 degrees and there we go I've got it back uh, and 135 and we're going to finish that sketch we're done there now we're going to go and uh, edit our first extrusion so just right click and edit feature and what we're going to do here is go and get rid of all those extra chunks there we don't need them and we're going to do the same over here except we've got a little bit more to get rid of because we're going to get rid of those uh, those extra lines. We want this to be a, 
do I do that for? Just gonna swivel this around so I can actually see what I'm doing. That's better. All right. Okay, to that, we're gonna edit our second feature now. And we're just gonna add those little bits back in. We're gonna remove that. We're gonna add that, remove, uh, add that and remove that. That just creates a nice smooth shape to mimic the opposite side. We're gonna okay that and we're gonna edit our third feature. And we're gonna remove those little extra bits on this one. And as you can see there, it is now resembling a hinge, which is uh, what I mentioned on the first video. Now we've got a lot of extra pieces here that we don't need and I'm all about simplicity. So let's go back. This is the extrusion we created for the holes on this side here, so that those mounting holes were on a surf uh, flat surface. We can just go ahead and delete that now. We don't need it for this project. And the sketch, for those circles and same again, the one for the first body and just right click delete and also delete. Yeah, you've noticed here that these holes are lit up yellow. It's just a warning, it's just a caution and it's just saying that they were referencing an extrude and, uh, and a sketch that's no longer on these panes. So that's fine. We can just uh, ignore that for now because we're not doing any more work on this project. Now I'm just going to swing this around and I'm going to move this body just to show you what we've done. I'll just drag that in and let's go up to the top, get the top down view. It's not quite aligned perfectly but this is good enough for what we're doing. Now click on this set pivot and now I can move this pivot to the center of that circle and I'm just going to click that green tick there to say OK. And now we can swivel that on that point and you can see there I've got 65 degrees of swivel either side. So that's going to get us 130 degrees swivel which is a little more than I thought we were going to get. I was predicting somewhere between 90 and 120. Uh, realistically you're not going to get the full 130 degrees swivel because if you brought this out to 65 Unless you're mounting something that's exactly 30 or 40 mil, whatever you mount to this is going to interact with the wall or whatever this is mounted to. So picture that's on a wall and you've got a home theater speaker that might be 80 or 90 mil wide, might be longer. Um, that's gonna out, overhang out to here. Now you could overcome that by making this bracket a bit wider, uh, perhaps making this bracket a bit wider just to extend that surface out. Um, but otherwise, realistically, you're probably gonna be getting more like 90 degrees swivel. Um, that's gonna allow for a slightly larger object. Uh, but nonetheless, it is a swivel bracket as promised. All right, let's jump over to the 3D printer and see what this looks like. <laughs> time conclusion. Uh, so the bracket works well. It prints it off beautifully, um, works as I expected it to. The only problem is on the original bracket we left that large spacing between all the pieces to allow it to clip together nice and neatly um, without any interference. With a swivel bracket it needs a little bit more friction so as you can see it just swivels far too easily. Um, for mounting a home theatre speaker or something like that with a bit of weight on it, it's naturally going to add friction from the downforce, in which case it's not really going to move as much. And with a home theatre speaker, is it going to matter if it's a few degrees off? Um, not really. Um, 
usually home theater speakers are your high sort of high sort of sounds not bassy and not going to have any rumbles that's going to make it jump around However, if you're trying to mount something with a bit more precision, uh, where you're trying to focus on a particular area, like a CCTV camera, um, you're really going to want that friction because you know if a gust of wind comes through or just bumping of the wall is going to make it jump around. A um, couple of way simple ways of overcoming that would be perhaps some super glue to hold it in place. Not ideal, um, is a solution. Uh, some spaces between the the levels on the uh, hinge would definitely work and you know some nylon spaces even cut out some round bits of cardboard and poke a hole through would, would be effective um, I did have another idea of wrapping a rubber band between the upper and the lower section and crossing it over so it weaved between them and then when you put it together that would add fri friction um, once again not ideal we're sort of searching for perfection with this uh, so I've come up with a couple of ideas in Fusion uh, we're just going to jump over and have a look at those minor changes we can make so the first fix we can do in Fusion is probably the most obvious. Uh, we can go in and reduce the gap between those sections. So if we edit the third feature, we can reduce this down to 15.5, and then we can increase our offset to 12.25. That's gonna leave that centered still and gonna reduce that gap that sits between these spaces here. This is the version I'm gonna to upload to Thingiverse as it is like that. So I'm just gonna save that one right now. The other one we can try is reducing the size of this. So if we go and edit our first feature and we can reduce that down to 30 mil. Then we're gonna go and edit our second feature and we're gonna offset this by 15.2 and we're going to give it a distance of 14.8 then we're going to go and edit our third feature and we're going to do the same thing there but in reverse so we're going to offset it by 14.8 and give it a 15.2 mil I think I've got that right and we'll just confirm that by moving the second body and we've got a 0.1 mil gap there um, sorry rather we've got a 0.5 mil gap now we know well, I know with my 3d printer that I'm going to have a 2 mil spread on each side because I print with a 0.4 mil nozzle and that's going to leave 0.1 mil gap between them once we clamp them together. And then of course, naturally, just reduce the size of that pin to suit. Uh, however, with this version, I would recommend not using the pin. Um, I would recommend using a M4.5 bolt and a nut on the end. So a 35 mil thread will do it with a nut on the end. So there you go. As you can see, Fusion 360 is a powerful tool. Go back to your design, make a couple of clicks, couple of changes in dimensions, perfect your design. It's that simple. Uh, don't get discouraged if your first design doesn't work. Uh, many of my designs haven't worked the first time. I've been back and had to reprint them three or four times to get it how I wanted it. Um, one of the great instructors that helped me get to where I am with uh, CAD, he mentions that 3D printing should be looked at as a hobby, not a job. And if you look at it as a hobby, uh, it's a learning process. Uh, so as I said, don't get discouraged when your first print doesn't work. Just keep tweaking it until you get it right. Um, now, I do promise my next video isn't going to be brackets or mounting. So forget WFX bracket guy. Um, that's not going to be a thing next time, I do promise. Uh, having said that, though, this mounting bracket that I created on my first video, I'll bring that into screen there, actually had more likes more downloads um, people added it to their collection more than all of my other designs combined before i uploaded this one um, so that just gives you an indication that people are looking for basic household items um, people don't want the complex people aren't looking to print off figurines and vases i'm not saying that 
don't put that stuff up there, but I've really definitely found that that was more successful than anything else I've uploaded to uh, to Thingiverse. There's something for something to think about there. Please leave your comments down below. Give me some ideas on what you want to see made. Uh, maybe you've got a design that you want me to have a look at and see if we can perfect it. Uh, more than happy to help you there. Um, I hope you've got something out of this. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like if you liked it, share it out, jump on my Thingiverse page, show some love there. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.